Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how to prevent IP address hacking because there is a such thing as IP address hacking. Now to give you a little background, an IP address is your identifier for your devices on the internet. Now there are two types of IP addresses, but overall every uh, device that you use has its own IP address, which allows you to connect to websites, allows devices to talk back and forth, and it basically looks like a series of numbers, like that. Now this IP address that's displayed in the image is an IP address that goes to nowhere, but at least you get the picture as far as IP addresses are concerned. Now, um, what are the differences as far as IP addresses are concerned? So you have both a public and a private IP address, which works in two ways. Number one, your private IP address allows your individual devices to connect and interact with each other on your personal home or business network. So that Wi-Fi printer that you have, your iPhones or Android devices when you connect them to your Wi-Fi, even your smart home devices such as your Amazon devices and Google devices are, own assign, are all assigned their own IP address to allow them to communicate and get to the internet and to interact with other devices in your home or office. Now, you also have what's called a public IP address, which is something that is generated by your internet service provider. Now, IP addresses that are public work in two ways. You have an ever-changing or what's called a dynamic IP address and you have what's called a static IP address. What's the difference? Well, with the dynamic IP address, most of us that have an internet service through our internet service provider are using dynamic IP addresses, which means that our IP addresses are constantly changing. To change an IP address, you simply can wait a few days and your internet service provider will change your IP address. If you unplugged your router, and plugged it back in, it would be assigned a new IP address when it was when it's connected. And that's how most of us roll. And the reason being is because of IP address hacking. Now, in a lot of instances, as far as a pro, uh, public or not public IP address, but a static IP address, uh, businesses will set up static IP addresses to allow people to connect to a server or multiple servers without it jumping around. Pup, static IP addresses have kind of gone away because corporations have moved their information into the cloud, which all you require is a browser. Also, remote access software such as LogMeIn, TeamViewer, and even um, Remote Assist from Microsoft don't require an IP address because there's an identifier on the other end that allows you to connect ro remotely to another computer. Now, static IPs, aren't around as much anymore but regardless if you have static or dynamic you can always run into issues with an IP address and now keep in mind that IP addresses don't give criminals your information directly as far as name address and any other personal details but an IP address can provide a criminal access to the city that you're in and maybe who you're using for an internet provider. Now, that doesn't sound like that much, but you have to realize what things can happen if a criminal were to get access to your IP address. So what can happen? Well, number one, again, can access your sensitive information such as your geographic location. Number two, they can impersonate you uh, for malicious purposes. So for example, Let's say a criminal were to get access to your IP address. They could um, uh, potentially copy your IP address and put it in their router or another device and get you into big trouble by looking at inappropriate sites um, and other things that would lead law enforcement to your location as opposed to their location. Next, uh, they can use your IP address to actually hack your device. So if a hacker has your IP address, they could definitely use a port scanner to get into your computer and find out exactly um, what vulnerable ports you had in your network and then 
log in that way. But with those things in mind, how are criminals getting access to your IP address? And you would be surprised in the variety of ways. Really, there's only three, but at the same time, let's take a look and see how criminals can get access to your IP address. And you're gonna be shocked with this. So number one, they can access your emails. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Your email address is betraying, betraying you. Uh, email programs such as Yahoo and Outlook actually put the IP address in the header. Now who's using Yahoo? Some people still are. A lot of people are still using Outlook. And you have to be careful because it could be broadcasting your IP address if you decide to st start a conversation with someone malicious. Let's say that a criminal sends you an email and then you respond back, then they've got your IP address. So beware of who you email and make sure that you pay attention to your email service to see if it's giving out your email address. Next is vulnerabilities within your router. Now your router can definitely betray you if you don't update your router and you can um, and you need to make sure that you are changing the login credentials for your routers to ensure that criminals can't get on Google to find that information and know the username and password access to get into your router. Uh, lastly, the internet. Online ads and bogus websites that cyber criminals set up can potentially give out your IP address so that they can get your IP information. Uh, like I was saying before, now your IP address is changing on a constant basis, but it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't change as often as you think, and you really have to be careful where you go on the web in order to make sure that you are keeping your information safe. So, what can we do to prevent criminals from getting access to our IP addresses and committing IP hacking? Well, the number one way would be through some sort of VPN or virtual private network. Uh, virtual private network uh, masks your IP address so that when you're surfing the web, criminals can't see your IP address. And sometimes a VPN will put you in a different country, making it even harder for criminals to get access to your information. So VPNs are a pretty safe tool to use. While not necessary, it is an important step to make sure that you have all of your tools in place to keep criminals from getting access to your information. Of course, most attacks are cyber or socially engineered, so good thinking and also making sure that you're using your built-in operating systems antivirus software will keep you out of the hands of criminals. Now, what are, so two ways. You can use a VPN service or you can use a web browser, a free web browser that has a VPN built in. So some of the tools out there are Opera, which is on the far left-hand side. Then you've got Epic Browser, which is free and has a VPN. And then finally, you have the Tor web browser, which has a VPN built into it. What do they look like? Well, let's start with Epic. So there's the Epic Browser right there. Keep your browsing in searches secret. Don't keep Epic a secret. So tell your family and friends to use Epic and there you have it. And Opera, which is one of my favorites of the freebies, is this website here. So if we minimize Opera for a little bit, as you can see, there is a little VPN button that you can type in and, or button that you can depress and it'll automatically turn on the VPN and allow you to start surfing the web. And if you click it again, it'll turn the VPN off. Oh, there we go. Tells you. Um, if you want a device-wide VPN, then you can download their software. But for the most part, you can just use the built-in VPN in Opera. And then finally, let's take a look at Tor, which many of you probably don't know. But Tor is a browser that allows you to surf the dark web. But it's probably one of the more important tools that you can use in order to keep your information safe. So Tor is loading and then let's look at Tor real quick and then you can kind of get an idea of what it's doing. So let's open that up. 
There's the Tor browser and Tor itself should keep you safe and protected from any cyber threat out there as far as criminals looking at your VPN service. So those are browser based browser or browser based browsers or VPN based browsers. Oh, that's too funny. That will allow you to keep your information safe. Now you can go to traditional method and get your own VPN service, such as what's pictured now on the screen, which is ExpressVPN, Hotspot Shield, NordVPN, and Surfshark. Any of these programs will cost you, but also they offer you what popped up earlier, which is system-wide protection for all of your computer uh, stuff. Because a browser base is only going to protect you if you're looking for information through a web browser, if you're using a system-wide web or a system-wide VPN, it's going to protect your devices, meaning your phone, your tablet, your laptop, and your computer. And if you're mobile, you definitely need to be using a VPN for all of your information. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do as far as VPN attacks are concerned. Now, other than using a VPN, if you're at home, you can just unplug your router from time to time in order to reset the IP or IP address from your internet service provider. Uh, but a VPN is going to keep you protected for the most part, and it's probably one of the best ways to keep you safe from IP hacking attacks. With that said, if you've got comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you to find out uh, if you have any questions about VPNs and which one that I would recommend. As always, with every video, make sure that you like, share, and comment on this video and make sure that you do share it with your family and friends that are probably experiencing some computer issue or had questions about VPN. So with every video, my goal is to make sure that you are getting the most from your tech devices uh, and making sure that you are experiencing a whole new world of ideas and experiences through that tech. I love technology and I've read all the manuals and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching.